now we were waiting for i guess an official announcement about the about the series and we've kind of got that uh, through an, by way of an investor call with uh, electronic arts ceo andrew wilson um, and he uh, confirmed that the the drive to NBA Live, which we discussed on the last episode, has apparently uh, been cancelled. Although I guess if it's never been announced, can it really be cancelled? But either way, <laughs> um, well, there was something showed up a quarter, the first quarter of 2017, uh, you know, the, the early uh, 2017, and that isn't happening. So called a cancellation. It's arguing over semantics at that point. But nevertheless, a game is not going to come out in the first quarter. But not because it's not finished or that they're unhappy with it, or it's, so they uh, so they're saying. But according to Andrew Wilson, uh, who ha- who did um, acknowledge the troubled history of live, and I guess you you can't really not <laughs> be with it, you know with you being dishonest to the fans if you're not. But uh, did say that uh, when the uh, alluded to the higher ups at EA getting their hands on what they've been doing down there at EA to be run with NBA Live um, on the game that was scheduled to launch in early 2017, and it felt that. Uh, in all, in a quote, in all honesty, it's really, really good, really fun. Um, so what they're going to do is, again, quoting, double down on it, uh, add to it, and launch it as a full beat later this year. So basically, we'd speculated last week, Ben, that the Drive to NBA Live was going to be a stripped down, uh, like a demo or just a digital only release that had a few features, maybe a couple of modes, and just showed off the gameplay. But they've decided just to go full steam ahead with what was a, presumably going to be called NBA Live 18, and release as a full game later this year. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, we we kind of talked about in the recent podcast about you know pros and cons of it. You know, could have been seen as a good way to test and as like a long beta test and all that. But but um, you know, if signs and you know if it is uh, at a really good stage and they want to add on to it and all that stuff, and the fact that there'll be what seems to be stated, you know, doubling down on the resources and, and obviously, you know, so sounding like it's going to be like a fully fledged game and that. So it sounds like it will be worth the wait in terms of uh, what they're looking at doing with the game. So, yeah, uh, we'll take it as definitely a positive indication. Um, and yeah, look forward to finding out more i'm hoping around the e3 period or maybe just after uh, when ea is doing their own event um, yeah yeah where, uh, alongside e3 like, like a lot of companies are doing at the moment yeah um i mean it was pointed out to me in the comments on the we posted the news uh, article about it and the the original report uh, pastor padre uh, broke the news originally and then polygon uh posted an article which uh, which i based my um report on and linked to of course um it was pointed out to me in the comments on our bulletin on, on the NLSC that obviously it's an investor call, so it's going to have a positive spin on it to the investors that, oh yes, this is a good thing. But it is worth noting that this is the first time that an NBA Live game has been cancelled and they haven't said anything, or a release pushback or whatever, you know, cancelled, etc. That, that that's happened and they haven't said, oh, it wasn't up to our standards, or there are still problems, or we need extra time. It was kind of like, well, this is really good, this should be a full game. You know, they haven't said that before. Now, you could say that's a brand new spin, and hey, with Live's track record, I understand skepticism and pessimism. I mean, I'm not about to tell people how to think. But I do see that, and that does sound more optimistic than what we've heard in the past. Yeah, the, the language is, is is different to what we've heard in the past. So yeah, it, it's, it's a far more positive one in terms of um, you know, what we've heard in the past. So there's reason to be optimistic. We'll, no, I, I, I agree. Um, I mean, I, I've been trying to stay optimistic, and I've seen the incremental updates in from Live 14 through Live 16, and, and meeting with the developers and seeing the game work, work in progress. I've had my optimism, but at the same time, the disappointment that the Live 16 didn't have a lot of the features, the deeper Dynasty mode, the roster editing, all that stuff being absent. That was... Uh, well, Dynasty mode's there, but not deep enough. Uh, you know, that was a disappointment, obviously, and... There are some things, and we've said this before, that there can't be a next year on. Like, if they are going ahead with Live 18, which, which they are, and from what the sounds of it, what they've got is some really good gameplay, possibly on the Frostbite engine. That continues to be a rumor, not confirmed, but would make sense given what we know about EA transitioning to the Frostbite engine and the fact this has been pushed back. And um, the fact that Madden was just announced as well during the same thing, uh, same meeting, that 
it is going on for Frostbite this year. Absolutely. So it would certainly make sense. Um, if what, but what if, if if what they've got is an improved gameplay, which is important too, obviously gameplay being paramount. But if this is going to be a full fledged release in in the fall or, or autumn, if you're an Australian like us, um, later this year, September October time, it does need to have all the things we've talked about: the roster editing, the deeper dynasty, the deeper rising stars, more stuff to Ultimate Team, um, a live pro am expanded beyond what they did last year with the new with new more venues and uh, squad options and other things that we've talked about before that'd be great. You know, if it is going to be fully fledged, it has to be fully fledged, you know, a fully featured game with all that great stuff, all the stuff that you come to expect from a sports sim uh, title, and on top of the gameplay improvement that apparently is there. But I mean, I see people being disappointed. I understand that, especially because of the radio silence and the you know, oh, news is coming soon, news is coming soon, and then we get this. I do understand that. Um, I think the reason that I'm I'm not as upset is because I kind of I thought it was always a possibility, I guess, that they might turn around and say, well, this is not a great time to release a game anyway, um, you know, halfway through the season and when, when 2K's already got the share of the market and when people are already looking forward to the playoffs and other sports. Um, and also because I guess I've been around a long time. You know, I, I remember the disappointment when NBA Live 2002 didn't come out on PC. You know, I've been through the ups and downs, so I, I feel I can keep it in perspective that maybe some younger a game is it can't because it's maybe their first um, early experiences with some of the really disappointing things in in live but I mean that's a generalization I may be wrong I, and I do understand why people are upset but at the same time you know if, if it's if it's for the best for the series um, if well, the other thing is people are saying that if, if you release it in in early 2017 what's the point so on one hand, you've got people saying, what's the point? And the, and the EA says, well, okay, yep, there is no point in doing that. Let's make it a fully fledged And then people say, well, what are you doing that for? So whatever they do, uh, apparently it's the wrong thing in someone's eyes. So no one's ever going to be entirely happy. Until, of course, until and unless they can release that fantastic game that the live feels like it has the potential to have these past few years, that you can see the good ideas and the, the, the potential in, in some of the, those ideas. But, but yeah, I, I do hope that Live 18 is the game that finally... You know, after all this time, after skipping 17, after skipping the drive to NBA Live, whatever that might have entailed, yeah, I just hope that Live 18 finally can be that strong comeback that the basketball gaming really needs, you know, to have that two viable options on the market. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about this the other day, uh, upon hearing it, it was like, maybe they should have, they could have done something like, as an in-between game and all that stuff. Maybe you have like, a new NBA street or something like that sort of come out in between just to sort of, uh, you know, sort of a bit of like a sort of tie uh, people, tie goodwill tie people over like, like a HD remake yeah. of maybe street home court or, or jam on fire edition. One of those two, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, no, as, as yeah, as a good thing, but, um, I, I'm, I'm just, thinking, just, I mean, just I mean, to keep the, keep the taste and, and, you know, just, bit extra flavor and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, a brand new game would be fantastic, but if that was... Obviously, you've got to develop that as well. Even if they could do a HD port, a remake of a popular game like Home Court or Jam on Fire Edition, I think that would have filled the gap and, and made some people happy. Like, oh, this is a new release, you know, new EA basketball game that's not a mobile game, you know. If if they didn't have the time to... Or, or, or the development team somewhere to develop a new game, I think, you know, a lot of companies have had success with the HD remakes. So yeah. I, I think it would have flown, certainly. Uh, the, the the only uh, well you'd, you'd have to update the rosters because you probably wouldn't be able to people would want to play with updated rosters so if you just do the HD remake with the new rosters I, re I reckon people would have enjoyed it yeah you know just yeah just something uh, as a way to fill in a time for during the meantime while we wait for the for the major title I mean you, you talk about goodwill uh, do you think they should push through a new roster update for Live 16 now yeah, I think so. I mean, they they did the extra support with Live Ten and all that. Obviously, with the yeah. whole Elite Eleven situation. Um, yeah, uh, I I can see I can see it being a good thing uh, and and something that could be worthwhile. I, I think it would be a great move on their part to actually to actually do that. Um, yeah, because obviously some people are upset by the 
by the announcement, and I, I do understand that because you know they've been very loyal to the brand and trusting in the brand, and you know putting this extra time into Live 16 and everything for for YouTube channels or simply just uh, you know as enthusiastic gamers. So absolutely, I think it would be a great move if they could get a, a roster update out there. I know people have done that. I know you and I have floated the idea to the people we know at uh, EA and, and others, others in the Game Changers program, etc. And I definitely think it's an idea worth suggesting again and exploring because even if they don't add all the rookies or just add them with generic faces, just just getting the, some the existing players on the new team so that there's some new content for Live 16 uh, to hype up Live 18 and to show that goodwill, uh, I think it'll go a long way in saying, you know, we, we trust you, you know, we thank you, rather, we thank you for trusting us and being a part of this journey and being so patient and, and understanding as we <laughs> try to get back to where we want to be. Uh, so for, for supporting the product, here is some extra, you know, post 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 release support if you will <laughs> so no i definitely hope to see it will we see it um i don't know about you but i'm kind of skeptical like i said I'll, I'll certainly pass the suggestion along to the people that i know but i mean yeah it's <laughs> it's sort of out of my hands once i do that and and probably out of theirs too but but um you know because it's a lot of it, it's it's more than just having a great idea it has to be feasible and people working on etc but but I hope it happens, but I don't know about you, but I, I'm kind of skeptical. Oh yeah, I, I think I think the biggest drawback or the potential thing that would prevent it from happening is how many people are still playing. Is it worth the resources, time, and money in that sort of sense? If if there's only say maybe like a few thousand people, as to maybe opposed to like a couple hundred thousand people, mm. it may not be worth the staff time and, and cost and, and all that stuff to, to do it when they could be just focusing in all, having that, you know, maybe those few extra staff working on the on the new new game and that. Yeah. So I, I could see that being the, the biggest sort of uh, reason why they wouldn't as such. Yeah, time, I, I, time and resources and, and like you say, the number of people in a, how how mm. worth it is it. I mean, Referring to my uh, current, the unofficial roster updates that I did for NBA Live for so many years, every so often I'll get uh, people, you know, saying, "Oh, you know, when's the new uh, Live 07 update coming out?" Lots of us are waiting for it. Um, says one person in the email, and I don't want to be cruel and ask because it's always a very polite uh, request, and I know how I'm asking, but uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, not a lot of people are actually waiting for a Live 07 PC up roster update at the moment. Um, so, from EA's point of view they're actually putting time and money and resources uh, more so than I am doing it unofficially in my spare time <laughs> playing a game while they're developing a new game as well. You know, yeah, absolutely. Would it be worth it for them? Um, I, I think it's worth considering, though. If nothing else, it's certainly worth putting the suggestion out there because it would certainly oh, show a lot sure. of goodwill. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There's, there's no doubt in that. It, I think just given the space between the games, like the time that the two games have come out, uh, will, will come out, I suppose, and how many people would have continued playing those games. I, th I think it's a slightly different situation between like what happened with Live 10 and Elite 11 and all that stuff, just in terms of, yeah, the 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 distance or the... It's two years, yeah. basically. Two years, it's going to be two years yeah. between updates between, uh, between Live 16 in 2015 and uh, Live 18 later this year in 2017. And uh, immediately after cancelling Elite 11, they did announce that they would continue to support NBA Live 10. And NBA Live 10 was a, a game that sold a lot better, and people yep. liked a lot more as well. So there is some difference there. And even Live 09 actually unofficially got some updates continued through the 2010 and 2011 season as well, which was kind of cool. They didn't switch it off, um, but what wasn't as detailed. Well, at least through the 2010 season, I believe, the Dynamic DNA updates continued, even though they were only advertised for a year, actually. But, you know, hopefully they do that. Hopefully even just some new challenges in Ultimate Team as well. I mean... Just just some new con just some new content being pushed through to give people you know, a reason to play and a thank you to, as uh, for supporting the brand even through these you know, uh, troubled and uh, uncertain times I guess. Yeah, I, uh, I mean I'd like to see it. Uh, I think I th I agree it'd, it'd be goodwill and yeah good thank you from the A team and all that stuff. So yeah, so if, if they do it'll be great. We'll, we'll make our suggestions to the channels that we have, and I'm sure that other people, you know, the, the NBA Live community uh, on uh, on social media and YouTube and everything, they will be uh, continue to be outspoken um, in their both critique and support. You know, that's the way, you know, 
that's what we should be as gamers. We are passionate about it, so that's why we're going to have those opinions and, and speak out. Um, as for Live 18, we'll see. And we'll, we'll certainly see if we can set up some more interviews and get some more details when the time is right. But uh, yeah, that's the other thing that I, I guess we should mention uh, before we wrap up and move to the next topic. Uh, I have seen some people, you know, really criticizing the developers on Twitter because, oh, they're talking about, you know, their cats or they're talking about other games or things. I mean, they've got their own orders about what they're allowed to talk about on social yeah. media. You know, yeah. uh, you <laughs> when you're employed by a company, especially in, in the gaming industry like that, uh, you know, if depending on how, how high you are up on the food chain, you know, you have to definitely be very careful about what you actually say uh, as far as yeah. putting out that information and um yeah it, it's it's their personal twitter account as well you know that they maybe they'll give some tidbits about the game every so often and that's always fun to have but you know it's they're limited in what they're allowed to say about what they're actually working on so i mean you can't hold that against them for not giving us the scoop because you know it, it's unfair to expect them to jeopardize their jobs and then have them then have the company lose a talented person because they've had to fire them because of a, a social media problem um yep just that we can get a tidbit uh, in 140 characters. So I do think some of that criticism is unfair. Again, I understand the frustration because a lot of people are frustrated now in the uh, the live community, but but the that's, they're the wrong targets. They're, they're, that's that's out of line, I feel. Yeah, you know, it, you know, they're working as hard as they can and on what they're trying to achieve and that. Um, you know, the decision is out of their hands, so... Yeah, respect the staff that are trying to deliver something, and we'll, it's just a few extra months, and we'll see what they had envisioned in, in what they've been working on the last two years. So yeah, definitely. And, and to that end, you know, we'll try and get our interviews and information as we can, but it all comes down to when EA is, you know, when their marketing department has got all this planned out, when they're allowed to say something, when they can actually give us something of significance. We'll keep making our inquiries in the background. I'm sure that we get a tidbit here and there on Twitter, but it's it all comes down to uh, what they're allowed to say as employees and and when the marketing strategy is when that's all worked out for when the information is allowed to come out. So it's just something to keep in mind. You know, let's not bite the hand that feeds us, so to speak. Let's let's not be um, a, a hostile or toxic um, uh, community fan base. Uh, by, by all means, you know the criticism is fine. The frustration is understandable, but you know, uh, do think twice before lashing out because yeah, they're uh, they're limited in what they can say at this uh, this at this time at any rate. But yeah, I guess we'll see, Ben. We'll see what comes, and we'll continue to cover it. And um, I'm sure we'll continue to speculate in the, mo- in the coming months. But hopefully, we do have that full robust release coming with Live 18. I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> 